Thank you so much for, for coming. Thank uh, you also for inviting us, Filipino um, content creators. Oh, well, uh, as, as you know, I, I'm, I'm a huge fan of everything that goes on with the, 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 the creative world in the Philippines where uh, you have the most amazing creators, but you also have the craziest, craziest fans on the planet. But that's, that's another, another story. Um, uh, Alex, tell us um, a little bit about yourself. For, for people who may not uh, uh, be too aware of, of you, for people who, who've come from Mars, who are yes. you? Tell us about yes. your channels and, and how did you get to where you are today? So I'm Alex Gonzaga and um, I was an actress before. Um, I, I host, I sing, I occasionally dance. Um, I'm also an entrepreneur and to 2017 I became a YouTube vlogger and that was the time that it opened so many doors for me to become a more um, genuine content creator and I became, uh, I, I had so much opportunities that I never thought would come my way because of being a content creator because when I was an, an actress, so when you're an actress, you just go to your show, to your work, they give you script, they ask you what to do. But when you, when you are a content creator, you plan everything, you edit everything, you're, the, you're just thinking about everything. So when I was just an actress, when I go to set, I would always tell the writers, I think we should change this. So for our industry, it's a big no. If you're an actress, you just do whatever the directors say, the writers say. You don't have any comments. You should not have any comments. Even if a brand gets you, you just have to do whatever because you're paid to do that. But when you are a content creator, you can collaborate. You can say your opinion. You can actually execute what you want. So when I was still an actress, I'm already like that. And because I wasn't really well-known, my sister was really well-known at that time, and I was just given this opportunity to become an actress. They're all like raising their eyebrows, <laughs> saying, why is she like complaining? They think that I was complaining, but actually I was just asking them that I think this is a better way to execute this. So now that, you're, that content creation is really like becoming mainstream in our industry, Somewhat, the brands and the writers, the directors, even in the industry, they're already they're already open for you to collaborate, to give your opinions, and they won't mind. So I was really happy that um, people are trying, are accepting content creation now and being a content creator. What it really takes to be at one. Um, to, to, I know. Uh, could I ask the gentleman at the back of the room what? to please keep it down? Maybe uh, if talk outside. Haroon? Shh. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Sorry. We can, hear, we can hear you up here. Um, um, so so uh, you've, you, you've kind of grown. It's about five years. Your channel's about, yes, five, five, years. about five years. Um, we're talking about brands and, and, and the work yes. that, that creators are doing with brands. Which kind of brands do you work with? Oh, I've worked with a lot of brands. So... Um, I was, as I mentioned um, yesterday, Philippines is really big with endorsers, with um, getting influencers when they want to promote something. So I've worked with from startup companies to big companies. I've worked with them. And my realization is it's better to work with the big companies rather than the startup companies because in startup companies, they don't really know what they're going into, they're not really familiar with how to deal with endorsers or influencers, so they think if they get you, they own you because that's, the, that's all their money, you know, that's like the bulk of their money, so they're really demanding so much from you. Unlike with the big companies, they kind of understand how it is to have an endorser, how it is to have a content creator, so now I've learned that when I'm um, accepting inquiries, if it's a startup company, and if I feel like I'm not really going to use this um, product or this company doesn't really understand what it's like to, to get an endorser and an influencer, I turn them down because I've had so much horrible stories with startup companies. And are they pitching you? Are the companies generally, whether they're big or small, are they pitching you or are you pitching them? So before... Because they thought that I was an I was just an actress, so they're still um, 
not sure how how is content creation when I was starting on YouTube. They would tell me what to do. And then I would tell them, I don't want to do that. This is how I wanted to present your brand in my channel. So we're going to have a lot of um, negotiations, bargaining. They would insist on what they want, and I would insist on what they want. So sometimes they'll say, the, okay, so let's not push it, push through. So I'll say, okay, I'll do what you want. <laughs> I need the money. But most of the time, I'll just say, okay, it's fine. Maybe after you realize what it's really like to be a content creator. And then sometimes they come back. They really, really, uh, they, after they grasp how it is to get an influencer or a content creator. So I was really, I'm, I'm really insisting on what I want. But if I needed the money that month, I will fold. <laughs> <laughs> I, and then I will just delete the video afterwards. And then they would ask me, where's the video? It was three months ago. I'm not really proud of that video. I just wanted the money. But I will not tell them straight, of course. I will just say, oh, maybe something happened. It's YouTube's fault. So, <laughs> so, so authentic, I mean, we were talking about authenticity earlier yeah. with Ming Wei. Authenticity is really important, right? It's really important to, because, to, to be really authentic because... As I see in content creator creation in YouTube, everyone can just have their own account, their YouTube channel. So how will you stand up is to become yourself and to become your authentic self and raw. You become raw. So if you wanted to be filtered or if you want to be like so conscious about how you look like, then you can just be an actress or just be on TV. But if you wanted to really have an attention in, a, in social media sphere, you really have to be authentic because people on social media, they wanted to see someone they can relate to for the worst or for the best self. They will accept you because they just wanted to see if they have affinity, they have um, association with you. So I think that's why influencers in the Philippines or even around the world are more effective than... Uh, celebrity endorsers now because my theory, I'm always telling the brands because my theory is that because the audience know who we are as a person, they know my parents, they know your, how you look like when you wake up, how you look like when you sleep, they know your routine, they feel like they are your friends. So they feel like they're so affiliated with you because they know so much, they, so much, they know so much about you so when you say something like, oh, you know what, this brand really works for me, they like it, I like it, they would believe you because they think they're your friends. Like when you're in a dinner and then your friend tells you, this movie is really good, you have to watch it, you believe that, right? And so because they are your friends, you have a relationship with them. That goes with uh, um, content creators because you gave so much information about yourself and people know you from everything, from your heart, they see you. They feel like they know you, they are your friends, you're, they're like family to them. So when you say something about a brand and then you inject it in, it, in your video authentically and like genuine, genuinely you just inserted it without them thinking that it's an ad, they would really believe you because they feel like you're not going to lie to them because you're like their friend. So that's why I feel like being real and authentic can also come a long way to become a credible endorser and an influencer. Um, and and, and is it, we were talking about, um, yesterday we were talking about uh, the, the matchmaking that goes on and kind of we were joking about it being like corporate Tinder. Um, is, it, is it a marriage? Is it a partnership? Or is it a shorter kind of date? It depends on you. I didn't say one night stand, by the way. Uh -huh. I said date. Well, sometimes it can be a one night stand if you really... Okay, so for me, before, I really wanted to have a relationship with the brand. But then my, my mom said, she's my manager, she said, you can't have really a relationship with the brand because the brand sees you as a product. So whatever you say, if you're not, you're not working for them anymore, you're not um, giving them what they want, well, even if you work for them for 10 years, they will drop you because... This is business. So you have to treat them as business partners rather than a friend, a family friend. So what I do is I treat them as business partners, but if the brand is really nice to me and if they're really open for collaboration, they wanted me, they wanted my opinion, 
sometimes I give more than what they ask. So I give them suggestions. Oh, this is what you you can get. This influencers. If 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 you think that um, I don't fit in your brand, sometimes and it's wrong because sometimes they get that endorser and then I'm scratching my head. Why did I say that endorser's name? <laughs> so, but for me, because I feel like it's a two-way street. You really have to uh, to navigate if that brand really works for you. You have to ask their objective. Because I always ask them, what do you want? If you get me, what objective do you want? Do you want conversion, sales? Do you want awareness? If, if you really want awareness, then I can do that. But if you want conversion, translate to sales. And if their product is for babies, and I, ha I don't have a child yet, so I will tell them, I'm so sorry, but I don't think moms will relate to me. So, but then I have a mother, I can put my mother in the video and we will not pay her. So is that fine with you? Yes. So my, I will just ask my mom, mom, can you just stand here and hold this? <laughs> and then when she sees it, oh, it's a branded one. You have to pay me. And then I said, oh no, it's done. <laughs> How, how, do you, how do you measure success? Is it the money or is it the, the, the nature of the brand? You know, to, to have some brands, in, you, to endorse some brands is very credible, right? How, how would you measure success? For me, success is when you go out, for a brand. For a brand, if you really feel, I feel if my um, partnership with the brand is successful, it's when I go out and then people would ask me about the brand. Or if I'm in a restaurant and they would mention it to me that oh it's better with this remember this is your this is the brand that you use, or if I'm just walking in the mall and they would ask me about it, I feel like it it means that when they saw my video it really stuck them and it's really in their mind that's why when they saw me that's the first thing they'll ask me so that for me is a successful brand partnership, but as a content creator the best. Um, gauge for you to know that you're successful is that when you meet a uh, subscriber or when you just meet a follower and then they would just tell you how much you've changed their lives or their situation that time they just watch your video and they're happy about it and they forgot their problems then that is successful for me even if it's just one subscriber who approached me because that is my main objective. So when you become a content creator, you should also have your own objective. What do you want to have in this video? What do you want people to feel while watching your video? So for me, I'm my own audience in my videos. I want to be entertained. So if somebody approached me and told me that, hey, I really am entertained in your videos, I forgot my problems, and I'm so happy. But other content creators, they really want to educate. So if somebody approached them and say that, you know, I was laughing when I'm watching your video, then that's not, <laughs> that's not your objective. So it really depends on how you want your videos to be, um, to be taken by your audience. It really depends. So for me, it's really entertainment. So when they feel like I'm enter they're entertained while watching my video, I feel like it's a successful... Are, are you telling the brands how you're going to work with them or are they, are they giving you a storyboard? I, this is something I, I, I talk to a lot of creators about is this idea of the brands used to give a storyboard and you go and make the... Are you telling them how you want to treat their brand? So this is what I do. If a brand approach me and then gives me a storyboard, I'll tell them, oh, okay, if you want that storyboard, you can produce that, I'll do that, but then you show it on your page or you show it on your... Because that's not what I am, that's not what I do. But if you want your product to be promoted in my channel, then I won't follow that board. But if you still want to do that board, we can, but you will produce it and you will show it on your own, in your own channel, not my channel. So I'm really protective of my channel. And I think all content creators should be protective on their channel because at the end of the day, after one brand pays you, it's really your your longevity depends on your subscribers. So if you are loyal to your subscribers, they will be loyal to you as well. So you just don't milk them and you just don't uh, use them for money. You really um, treasure them and you really um, listen to what they really want from you, not just 
milk them, <laughs> but milk is good also. It's <laughs> lactose you'll be, intolerant. You'll be working with the milk brand next yes. on the back of this. I'm going to yes. call mummy and get you. A, yes, uh, where are those milk <laughs> brands? A dairy brand. <laughs> um, well, so, so we've got a lot of young creators here today. Yes. Um, what advice would you give young creators to work with brands? I mean, do they need to have 10 million subscribers or no. can they be, what, what advice, someone starting their career? For When you're starting, I think you should be really confident on your subscribers, even how, how many is it, depending on the quantity, even if it's just 10 subscribers, but you know your subscribers and you're confident that you know what they want. I think that will give an impression to a brand that they should get you. Because if you just if you're starting and you, you're just depending on the count of the subscribers, it will always be uh, it, a dead end because someone will always be higher than you. Someone will always have a higher subscribers count. Um, so if you, but if you are confident that even if you have this just your own subscribers, but you know them and you know their their heart, you know what they want, and you know what works for them, the brand will listen to you. And that's really important for the brand because that's why they're getting you. They want to get that audience that you have. So you really have to know your audience and you have to be confident that you know them when you are talking to the brand. There was a okay. the, the previous uh, creator on stage, Ming Wei, said when, when you're starting, it, the money doesn't matter. He said, if, if, even if you do something for free, I, I, I wouldn't have this conversation with your mother probably, but, but, he, <laughs> <laughs> but when, when, when the, the manager. My mom. I'm not being rude about the mother. But, um, but, I but, left her in the Philippines, don't worry. What, 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 what he said was um, people watching the, the content, they don't know if you've been paid or not. And if you're suddenly doing a, a brand campaign for a big brand, it's a really cool endorsement that gets you onto that ladder. That I mean, is, is that something that you would would advise or not for you? Not, not no, for you. Well, well, actually, me and my mom would always fight. She would call me and she would ask me, "Did this brand pay you? Why did you mention that brand in your video?" And I say, "No, because that I really use that brand." And she, "No, don't say that if they're not paying you." But for me, also to become genuine and authentic. You have to really tell your audience what you do, even if there's no payment, if, even if there's no brand intrusion. You just really have to be honest with them. What you really, what are you really using, or what are what's what what do you do every day? Like for example, when I go to the grocery and I have lockouts of other brands, of course I won't go to the competitive brands. But if I know that this. Um, this kind of food, I don't have any lockout. I really get them and I really show them that this is what I want. Because it makes them feel that, you, the, the audience, that you're not milking them, that you're just, just being honest with them and you don't care about the money. So sometimes, because I do that, sometimes when I inject the paid brands, they're already confused. What is it? So what I do is when a brand approach me, I will tell them, okay, so I think this is the content that fits you. For example, it's a day in a life. And then I give them the video and they would always complain, why are there other brands there? Oh, because that's my life. I just don't use your brand in, in one day. I use all those brands. Oh, but we, we want just our brand to be seen on your video. When I say, I can't do that because that would make it look like you paid me. So sometimes when I do that, or most of the time actually, my audience are confused if it's a paid ad or not because I, I gave them eight brands. But of course, it's different. Um, it's different uh, uh, food. It's different kinds of brand, not just the one brand. So that makes them think that you're just being honest with them. And I think as a content creator, you should really, really consider that also. Because sometimes brands doesn't know if they don't understand that this is not a commercial, it's actually, you are in trying to influence them and this is not a commercial, like you just, they just need one brand to be seen on that video. So, yeah. Cool, so, so last, last couple of minutes, Alex, and, and really, it's, it's wonderful talking to you, you're so honest, I mean, all of our speakers have been honest, but it's just so, it's really good to hear your perspective uh, on, on everything. Um, 
and we've talked a lot about brands and stuff, but, but let's, talk, let's go back to talking about you. What's, what's up next for Alex Gonzaga? Oh, well, I, I'm going to the orchard later. <laughs> I'm gonna buy. <laughs> I'm gonna use the money I got. No, no, no. Um, <laughs> so what I'll do next is I have a song coming up, but you won't, may you probably won't understand that because it's Tagalog. It's our language. So, um, and then I have another movie coming up, and um, I don't know yet if it's gonna be on Netflix or in Amazon. But but you're you're negotiating clearly. Have yeah. we got Netflix and Amazon here? We can start yeah. a little bit. Where are they? Are <laughs> They're all they based here. here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you know, Netflix has been a good um, friends with my producers, with my family also, because I'm always doing a parody in my videos there. So I call it Judge Flix. It's a Filipino style of their um, popular, TV, uh, popular series or movies in Netflix. So, so a song coming out, movie coming out. What's happening in creator world for Alex? What? What's that mean in the world of creators? Ah, creator world. So in creator world, I will create, procreate. <laughs> so in creator world, you know, it's really exciting to meet a lot of creators here. And then you, you'll see that they, they have different um, experiences. But at the same time, you will always have one common denominator, how it is to be a... Uh, you will always relate to something, even if it's different country, if it's different culture, it's different industry. So I really feel that um, I'm very honored and lucky to be meeting the, our co-content creators because I get to um, learn something from them and hopefully they, get, they, they learn something from me. But if not, it's okay, they just... Charge it to experience. <laughs> no, it's good. It's good. I mean, this is this is it's wonderful to hear this because look, this is the first time we've done this event. Yes. And, and my objective, our objective with this is that everyone learns. So whether you've got a hundred million subscribers, I mean, the the, the Jen Halienters who are here this afternoon collectively had have two hundred million subscribers, but they're still learning. You're learning, and to hear to hear that you want to learn is is fantastic. So that's really good feedback. Thank you. Um, thank now, you for this creator world. Well, and, and thank you for coming. And, and you know, you're talking about collaborations. I have. We heard this earlier. I have five hundred and twenty-three subscribers on TikTok. Can we collaborate? Is that? Yes. <laughs> Um, you can do ice bucket challenge. Not again. No, I've done. <laughs> it's oh, no, so no, no, outdated. No, 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 never doing that. I'm never doing that again. Um, so, so listen. I, I, I could talk to you forever, and, th and, and but we, we do have our, our next session ready to go. That um, the, the agencies are queuing up to, to, to take the stage. But you talked a lot about, uh, and I said it's so wonderful to hear that you're, you're honest. And all of our speakers have been honest, but you've really been so honest about things that have worked and things that haven't worked. You talk about authenticity, you talk about protecting your brand, your channel, um, and, and knowing your audience. Uh, so, so thank you so much again for coming to Creator World. Thank you Ladies so much. Ladies and gentlemen, Alex Gonzaga.